Mark is joining us from New York. Mark, great to see you. The race for second place continues. Haley gets money from a Democrat donor, and this has proven to be significant in a way. Can you talk to us about that? Well, I mean, the motivation for the uh, donor here, and it's $250,000, and uh, it's because uh, he is a well-known uh, antagonist against Trump. So he believes, perhaps, that if he supports Haley, Haley can knock Trump out. So it's not really the support, like which you talked about from the Koch family, which is uh, very conservative, to uh, boost uh, Haley's chances to become the nominee. But what's interesting about this debate and it was really quite extraordinary because everybody was attacking everybody. I was making a list of who attacked whom. So Vivek attacked everybody. He particularly attacked DeSantis. He attacked Haley. And he really let Christie have it when he basically said to him, you know, you <laughs> had that stamp with the bridge. You should go get a meal and get off the stage. Then DeSantis attacked Haley. Christie attacked Trump. Then Christie defended Haley and on and on. So it was just an absolutely off the wall uh, debate. But I think um, a lot of it was about Haley and she is perceived. A perception is very, very important. She is perceived to be surging. Now, what does that exactly mean? We're really not sure because there was an article in the Wall Street Journal recently by Gerald Tsai. He predicted that Trump will get the nomination and will win the election uh, by taking the Electoral College but losing the popular vote. So who knows? But clearly Haley's perceived to be, and even Christie defended Haley. So um, we have a lot of dynamics here. I think that Vivek's points, uh, and then Christie attacked him as a, a blowhard and so forth. I think he comes across very, very strong in terms of his mannerism. And a lot of these things in American politics are all about manner, manners and demeanor and and perception and how you come across on television. And I think he heats this up so much, uh, you really can't listen to what he's really saying. As far as DeSantis, I think the best comment I read was the one in the New York Post today, where they said he was no more Mr. Sunshine. Now, Mr. Sunshine, he's never been Mr. Sunshine. He's just not the most pleasant person around. He, Of course, he touts his benefits and all of his accomplishments. But if you look at Haley, I think she's really positioned herself very, very well, even on the abortion issue, which is a very hot ticket issue for Republicans. And, and again, people that I certainly I, I didn't take a whole poll, but I was speaking to people uh, and they seem to perceive her rise. So that's very, very important, her surge. So I think at the end of the day, it's really, a, a you know, it's up in the air. But then Trump is way, way ahead, as you say. So uh, all bets are off. Yeah, let's see what happens at Iowa. You know, you talk about how mannerism and perception is so important. Vivek seems to always get the attention, at least on social media. He has those one liners and whatnot. Uh, how do you see Vivek's rise in taking a stance and not criticizing the former president? Not that the other ones uh, do anyway, except Christie. And then you have Christie, who hardly had enough uh, points to even be on that stage. Do does. You know, these never Trumpers and criticizing Donald Trump. I know this is what Christie really wants to do. But ultimately, you know, it comes down to policy. And it seems that the Republican voter, at least, doesn't really care about uh, the criticism leveled against the former president, at least within their own party. Well, I think you saw in the debate itself, I, I, the only time I guess I was listening, I heard a really a lot of boos was when Christie really lashed into Trump. Uh, that, that was surprising to me. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, he's got a lot of supporters. Trump has got a lot of supporters, even though he's not on the stage. So it doesn't look like Christie's criticism of Trump or attacking Trump is really getting him a lot of uh, traction. At the same time, I think where Vivek, yes, he supports Trump and he's, uh, does he want to be vice presidential candidate? I don't know. I mean, I don't think he's going to be presidential candidate. Look, I mean, on the Biden side, we really have to analyze this. Biden's age has come under criticism, and so is Trump's age in this debate. So, so they, they're, they're both in this situation where I think they need to have very strong vice presidential candidates. And on the Biden side, 
the question is, is Kamala Harris a strong candidate for vice president? She's very, very unpopular in the idea that if Biden got elected, he'd have a strong vice president who could potentially be a successor. Who is going to do that for for Trump? You know, he his whole hubris is, you know, very problematic. If he said tomorrow, I'll take Nikki Haley, I don't agree with her. And she did a lot of things that I don't agree with, but I'll take her. What a ticket that would be. But Vivek maybe is trying to uh, mm. jockey into position to be the vice presidential candidate because I don't think he's going to be the presidential candidate. That's a zero possibility. And some of the things that he says, and he was accused of being naive, I think this morning on Fox News, uh, uh, Brian Kilmeade said that was very naive that he keeps talking about separating Russia and China. He does talk a lot about India and strengthening India, mm -hmm. which is a very good point. I think I agree with that. But he compared separating Russia and China, oh, gee, in World War II, we would have done very well if we separated Japan and Germany, which is so absurd an idea that it doesn't even uh, register on the, you know, worthy of discussion. Also, the other thing that was interesting is when they asked them, which president do you admire? And they had Washington, and that was Haley, and then they had Reagan, and they had Lincoln, and then, they, then I think DeSantis came up with Calvin Coolidge. And I think a lot of people were scratching their heads, you mm -hmm. know, who haven't studied American history recently. And he kind of clarified that today where Calvin Coolidge was known as Silent Cal and he never said more than a couple of words. I don't know. Was that sort of a, like a, a deep you know, point about Vivek? I don't know, because he says so many words and so strongly. <laughs> I didn't understand it. It really went by everybody. I didn't get it. So honestly, at the end of the day, the, the, the whole uh, group is shrinking. Now we have four. And it's almost like an Agatha Christie mystery. You know, then there were 12 and 11 and there were 10 and there were now there are four. But there's still Trump. So there really are five. So the next time, I mean, when we're going to look at this now down the road, coming into the primaries, it looks like based on the rules of the Republican Party that Trump will sew it up because it's really a winner takes all. And he's way ahead of everybody. So, you know, everybody is jockeying here to be number one. But Trump is the undisputed number one. So I think they're maybe trying for, for the second position. Christie doesn't have a chance to be a second position with Trump. That's for sure, because he's the never Trumper now. But as far as the others, maybe there's a chance mm -hmm. there. I don't know. But I think you really, because of the age of Trump yeah. and Biden, the, the VP race becomes much more important than it usually is. That's right. That's right. Many are concerned that Biden is just running to hand the White House keys over to Kamala Harris on day two if he should occupy the White House again after 2024. We'll have to wait and see. Mark, it's always great talking to you. Thank you so much for that analysis. And I'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you. All the best.